Whenever I break the restrictions that guide me, whenever I break the containment, it makes it difficult then to make choices. I, I'm sure the same might be true of you. I think it's true of many people where if you don't have some sort of principle to guide you or some, some path set out ahead, it's difficult to know which way to go, which is why it's been so long since we've seen each other. But it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. The restrictions I'm talking about are the restrictions of the tournament as I initially drew them off, up. Um, we're in the Baralti leg. We're going to be continuing that. Um, originally, the, the next step was supposed to be um, the game Small World. I decided I didn't want to do that, um, which left it open. What game is next? And that was a tough choice. One, because it's a three-player game. There's not a lot of three-player games that are... Um, violence games. I tried to I tried to focus the Brawlty leg on violence because the Brawlty are a warrior race. Um, so I went through a number of stages in deciding what game would be next. First was, well there's probably more, but the last one, I, the first one I remember was actually to do Small World again because my nephew brought my copy of the game back along with Underground which he Purchased. He had mixed them all together and he was like, oh, I'm not really playing it anymore, you can just borrow them. So I was like, oh, maybe it would be interesting to go back to that, um, especially since I have some history with the game. I, I used to play it solitaire a lot, um, kind of when I first started becoming aware of the bevy of board games that are out there. But it came down to I just really didn't feel like it. <laughs> I just. I, I, I was going to get started, I was going to set it out, and I was thinking, oh, it would be an easy, quick thing to do, like the Innovation Game was, which was the last one I filmed. Um, but I just really didn't want to. And so, I was like, what to do next? I had I was going to do a series of Brian Train games, um, but the the rate in which I'm filming has, is decreasing as the tournament goes on. So I didn't want to get into another thing like that. And... A lot of the three-player affairs didn't seem like they were maybe balanced, and so I was going to do another mini tournament of one-on-one -on -one Brian Train games, but that didn't. That was just going to make the tournament even longer than it is, and I feel like we need to we need to be moving forward. We need to be making progress. So then I got the new rules and components in the mail for this game, the Supreme Commander. Um, and I was all geared up to do that. I thought it was great that uh, GMT fixed their mistake. They, if you don't know the history of this game, I don't really either, but I am somewhat aware that the initial printing had some problems, and so they redid everything, and they just sent them out to people. It was kind of a surprise, so that got that on my mind. But I was reading the rules, and they left me cold. I, I just kind of felt like... Uh, and maybe because it's winter, I'm just not in the I'm not in the mode to to tackle something like that. Not that it's they seem particularly difficult. They just kind of were very like uh, I don't know, just the way they were worded just wasn't. It didn't feel friendly to me. Um, and maybe in the winter time, you want more fantasy. You want to kind of just kind of let your mind go away from the darkness of reality because winter is very real, right? It's very um, yeah. Um, but I think it's it's more just kind of the writing, and also because I've got some experience with Days of Decision too, and I think that's the kind of that kind of does what I want for the World War II political theater, political military stuff. I'm not that interested in war so much, but the the, the politics interests me. Um, but the problem with Days of Decision too is I don't really love the combat system for Solitaire. It's all about kind of bidding things, and that's just, uh, if you watch my 7x7 Seven Seven Ages video series, you can kind of see my struggle with that, because it's basically kind of the same system, where you just have to bid things, and so I kept trying to find replacements that using in that game, and I never really found anything that great. Um, so anyway, I thought Supreme Commander might kind of do some of the same things, but be simpler, and it's but it ends up being a lot more combat focused and that's not really the problem either. It's just the rules just weren't, they, they didn't have any joy behind them. It didn't feel like it should, it didn't, yeah. I couldn't like discern a personality. And I guess that's kind of the person, that was the personality of the rules. 
So then, kind of on a whim, I was just looking at my shelf over here. Oh, this is kind of my go-to shelf for things more when I'm playing solitaire. Um, that's not really how it's organized, but that's just kind of how it ends up. Um, I, I hit on this game, and this is the rule book for the game. It's called Space Empires 4X, and the rules are very friendly. I liked that, and it kind of it's kind of got. Um, it's fantastic, so I think that, that fits for the winter. Um, I mean, it's, it's science fiction-ish, right? But it's a, it's a Space Empire 4X game. So there's violence, right? It's, all, it's very military-oriented. Um, and the game was very easy to learn. Um, I haven't played it yet, but I think I'm just going to plunge into a first plane with the real people do a three-player game um, with the expansion, because we got the expansion at the GMT sale as well. Uh, a few things about the game that just kind of first impressions. The, the name is really funny to me. <laughs> it's just kind of like, this is what this game is. Um, it's like if a movie were called Action Movie, which I'm sure there's probably some movie out there that's called that, or if um, a European trading game were called European Trading Game. Um, but I guess the, there's a history of that in the war game lineage, right? There's a game called Spiel, or Kriegspiel, I think, which is maybe one of the first war games, which means war game. Um, so that, that tickles me that it's called that. It is very much kind of like kind of the 4X sort of thing, 4X, which is exploration, whatever, exploitation, killing people. Um, there's different, there's four different X's for those things, what you do in the game. Um, <clears throat> it seems very boiled down and simple, simplified. Um, and I ended up with a lot of what probably are 4X games, space, space 4X games. So it'd be nice to have this kind of like modern perspective of that to compare the others to as I get into those. Um, I know Throne World is one that's going to come up in the tournament. Um, so we're going to do that. And it should be pretty fun. I had to stop myself, um, just going back with, with my process of deciding what game to do. I was going to do this whole, and I might do this eventually, um, kind of real people galaxy thing, where the Space Empires 4X game is kind of the, the framework, but then, you know, when you go to a colony, it becomes kind of a Crusoe's planet, Battlestar Galactica hybrid, and then combat would be done with the battle, um, battle stations system, just to kind of get this whole kind of world going. <clears throat> but again, I want to move forward. I want to give the game a play just on its own before I start messing with it too much, though it's very um, amicable to be messed with. I feel like it's kind of designed to be plastic. Um, but that would be a whole other thing that would just probably last as long as the tournament, and so I probably shouldn't do that. So we're going to do a straight up Space Empires 4X. I just got on. A, I just went on a walk before I filmed this. Uh, just going back again to my progress um, in coming up with the game to do, and I almost I thought crossed my mind to do Puzzle Strike instead, but I think I'm sticking with Space Empires 4X. Um, Puzzle Strike would be fun to do, but I don't think it's quite violent enough for the Peralti leg. So it's kind of got fighters, but it's really this puzzly thing, and I just think it might make sense if the yeah, I, I won't go into it. So, here we go. Alrighty, we are set up and ready to go. Well, kind of ready. This is going to take me a while to play this, I think, because I'm playing with a lot of optional things and advanced things, and I'm not always the quickest person anyway. So I'm going to have to look things up and whatnot. Uh, the, the rule book suggests not to do what I'm doing, but I think it's okay because it's solitaire. I'm not, uh, the, the rule book's very conscience, conscious of uh, playtime. And we have the luxury of taking as many days as we need to finish this game. So if you notice, we only have three of our com uh, competitors here. That's because Pinky, she has assured her place in the final game of this leg. So basically what's going to happen is the winner of this is going to face off against Pinky in the final game. So she doesn't need to be here. I thought she might, I might have included her, but then it would just kind of make her just this kingmaker, right? And we don't need that. So 
Um, I'm not going to go too much into the nuts and bolts of Space Empires 4X for two reasons. One, um, it's been covered multiple places, I think, but I know Callendale did it, and he does a pretty good intro where he talks about everything, and so you don't need me to do that. But I will talk a little, so if you're interested, you can, you can go there. I will talk a little bit about what you're seeing, just in case you're not interested in doing that. The other, uh, the other reason is the game's pretty intuitive. There's not, um, there's no, no, no rules that just don't make sense. So kind of you can, if I just kind of explain a few things, you can kind of just follow along that way, I think. Um, so what are we seeing here? We're seeing that we have three empires, blue, yellow, and red. The empires are fairly generic in this game, but they are customized by these cards that come with the expansion, and then they'll change over time. But they kind of have this starting kind of generic feel. So if we look here, Sonny, he has the mean guys because they just bring horrible things to people. Um, and then Betty Crocker, he has sort of the standard human type people, right? Uh, their their, their uh, flagship is called the Enterprise, if that's any indicator. And then Junior, he has the Greek people. Um, there's a green color. I don't remember what the green color's theme is, but Junior's people, they like to use Greek names for things. So I already, I already drew their, their racial powers and took the liberty of naming their species. What I did, how I did that was I kind of took their the sort of semi-generic card names and kind of the theme of the people, uh, the, the color, and then coupled that with this, and then also looked at in light of what the um, player, the real person, might name the people. So Junior here, since we're looking at him, he's the Order of the Final Calling, and that, he's got Celestial Knights, so that made me think kind of like Knights Templar, Harbingers from this, you know, they're harboring the the end times, I think he's probably one of those people who are really into the book of Revelations. Um, so that's who he is. Celestial Knights, they have a super charge ability where they can charge in and do something. I haven't really read it too carefully because, you know, I'm taking in a lot of information and we'll we'll deal with that specific when we need to. Junior, he, um, and they, they each had a choice between two different cards and I'm pretty happy with what they got actually. I think they each had a choice that fit them well. Um, junior, he went with the Fearless Race. Remember, Junior wants to be a fighter pilot. Um, basically, they just they don't like to run away, and they um, they get to shoot first. I think uh, in the first round of combat. Uh, so his people are called the Furies. Going with the kind of Greek thing. Went short and sweet with that. And then Betty Crocker, he has the insectoids. He's also kind of the human-y people. So he is the host of fully integrated symbiotes. And my, my thought behind that is insects kind of took over or uh, developed a symbiotic relationship with humans. And this is the outcome. All right, so if we look over here, I'm doing, there's different options for setup. I'm doing the mixed. So normally you see how these, there's these kind of bubbles here. See that border? That bubble's only used for setup, and if I were doing it in the standard way, these would all have blue, blue ringed things here, um, blue bordered things, instead of blue and white, because the white's the deep space, and I think generally that that means it's more hazardous. So the basic game is kind of set up so you have some like kind of nice things close to home, and then as you reach out, you're gonna have to deal with more. I just did for a fully random universe, um, put them all in a bag and shook them up and. Put them out there. And so that's going to make for some advantages for some people. Like if you look here, Betty Crocker's got a lot of white close by. He's got these two nice yellow ones right behind him though. So he's kind of probably going to be exploring this way first before kind of heading that way. Which is interesting because Junior, his stuff kind of leads him towards Betty Crocker, right? Because he's got a, a ring of white here and then colored stuff there. And these things, they have diff like planets, hazards, all sorts of stuff. It's just kind of like what's the, what's the predominant feature in this sector? I'm also playing with an optional rule that if um, there's some things that are just like an event, if it's an event one, I'm going to draw a new one to replace it so that each sector will have some feature. Um, and then looking at Sonny here, Sonny's kind of, I don't know which way he would go. I think he might push this way. He's kind of got a choice. He can kind of push both ways, um, but he has to deal with a lot of white right off the bat. So he might have a rough start. 
Um, other kind of optional rules if you're interested in that, I'm using most of them. I'm not using the um, thing where you can design a ship just for the sake of time. You can design a special ship for each person and that, that's gonna, that would be fun to do, I think. Um, but I just kind of cut back on how much I have to process. Uh, research, I'm doing something that's not in the rules where I'm, you can put down the research centers. I'm, co I'm combining two rules actually. There's research center rules where you put down research centers and they they uh, produce thing uh, building or they produce points that you can use to, towards research. But I'm also going to use the thing where you have where you um, the money you spend directly on research is going to instead be for grants. And grants just give you a chance of success. They don't give you like a fast, a hard and fast. Um, you don't know for sure if you're going to get the technology if you if you put in the research. It just makes it more you know more likely. The more you spend, the more likely you are to get the next level of that technology. And I, I liked both of them. Um, I don't know how they'll work together, but um, who's going to get mad at me? Not me. Uh, so is that about it? Is that also? Oh yeah. Um, there's a lot of bluffing in this game. You see how these are turned face down? They have something on the other side. So there's the enterprise there. Um, that's so people don't know what's coming. There's decoys you can use. And I debated whether or not to have them face up or face down. It's certainly easier for me to track things if they're face up, but it's easier for me to make decisions on the other player's behalf if they're face down. So I think I'm gonna play with them face down unless someone kind of knows what's there. Like if they get into combat, you know what's there. Um, just to kind of simulate that and also put you in some suspense. You don't know what's what. Everyone starts with the same basic stuff. Uh, colony ships, a miner, a uh, flagship, some scouts, and then some space yards. So everyone's got the same thing. The only difference is their powers. And then basic, basic turn thing is you have three turns of kind of movement on the board and then an economic phase where you get to research stuff and buy new things and all that. And that's the game. So I'm going to get started and I'll check back with you um, after something's happened. All right, one last quick rule change I'm making. I, normally, I think the first turn player order is randomized, but each subsequent turn there's a bidding thing where you bid on turn order. I don't want to do that. I don't enjoy bidding in general, but I also don't enjoy bidding in solitaire games especially. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to roll every turn to, or yeah, for every economic phase, I think. At the, at the end of every economic phase, I'm going to roll for turn, turn order. Um, and so this time it's going to be Junior, then Betty Crocker, then Sonny. And the, the roll is also going to determine whether we're going clockwise or counterclockwise. So Junior rolled an 8, Betty Crocker rolled a 5, Sonny rolled a 2. So we're going to go, go in that order, and we're going to be happy with that. Okay, and this is starting off nice and easy, which is great. Uh, Junior just sent scout here, scout there, scout there. Those are scouts, I promise. He broke up his scout group that started the game. Um, two of them ended up being pretty nice. They're minerals. That's going to give his miner something to do on his next turn, which is going to be after everyone else moves. Uh, but this scout found a black hole. That's going to be interesting, I think, in terms of its defensive... What it, what it means for the defense of his home world. If your home world is destroyed, you lose the game. Um, and I'm, oh, one thing I am also doing is you have to, it's last man standing. There, there's uh, most games, I think it's, if most multiplayer games of this, Space Empires 4X, end when one person is eliminated, but I'm going to say that it doesn't end until there's one person left, one empire left. So we have to roll to see if that ship survives the black hole. And it does not. So this is going to be gone. I guess he can reveal it now. It was a scout. It was one scout. And sorry, Junior, but at least you get these. I guess we'll just go ahead and move on to Betty Crocker. Maybe just play a turn with you here. Betty Crocker, he wants to send a scout here, a scout here. And then a scout here, I think, is what he wants to do. Now let's see what he found. He wants to turn over the scariest one first, which is the white bordered one. Danger! I'll have to find out what that means. That, that's going to mean, I think, that we're going to draw another one because of the rule I'm using. 
Um, and then mineral and mineral. Lots of minerals in there. I didn't really examine the counter mix, but I, I'm guessing there's a lot of minerals. I might say that you draw another one if there's a mineral too, but uh, I don't know. So we'll see what danger does. We can look right here. Space is dangerous, especially the unexplored bits of it. When this marker is revealed, all units in the hex are destroyed. <laughs> oh, that sounds unfair. They're just destroyed? Can't they? What if they're really good at what they're doing? But what's the danger? I don't know. I'm going to think about that. I don't know if I can truck with just like some nameless danger. So I drew another one. I house ruled that you would just turn the other one face up. Like he got to call out what what was nice about the place before he was destroyed by the danger. Um, I guess the danger, since the danger goes away, it's got to be something transient, right? So maybe there's like a flare of um, mineral juice that were really harmful to the bug's antenna. And so that's why it went away. But the bug was able to say, there's a mineral here. Come get it, please. Unlike his friends who he's playing this game with, Sonny's going to only explore two hexes, although he starts with three scouts, just like the rest of them. Asteroids and a city, a, a barren planet, Polaris. Um, he's not going to be able to do anything Polaris yet because it it's, uh, needs to be terraformed first. But I think it might have aliens. I'm gonna look at that. He didn't. He's got two kind of troublesome ones: um, a barren planet that has aliens, and it's some asteroids. Okay, not so bad. Uh, Sunny's conservatism has kept his ships alive. So one, the asteroids really only affect combat and movement. Uh, if you're moving into them, you have to be adjacent at the start of the turn in order to move there. So you know. Kind of a, another kind of defensive thing for his planet, but will make it kind of inconvenient to go out to, especially since, you know, he's got a lot of probably nice things here. This doesn't have aliens because it's a home system marker. It's blue. It's not white. And so he doesn't have to worry about aliens being there. So as soon as he gets terraforming technology, he can have his first colony, and it's going to be right next to his home planet, too, so it can start producing resources and sending it back. Uh, easier than if it were further away. All right, we went through turn two. We're going to be starting turn three, but uh, what happened was Junior found another colony, or found his first colony right here, and starting to spread out this way. Found more minerals. Uh, his miners over here getting these minerals, picking them up next turn, and be able to take them home. Um, Betty Crocker had the most interesting turn. He got danger and lost in space. Lost in space lets someone else move you a space, so he got moved back here, kind of went here, and then got lost and turned back around, uh, put a new marker down. Then the danger was here, so he's down to one scout left that he's going to be able to do next turn, probably move here, um, kind of impedes his exploration, but the danger did give way to a colony, Prometheus, so that's going to be nice. I bet Junior wished he had that thematically anyway for his own uh, area. And maybe what we can do is just arrange a trade so that he can have Prometheus and Betty Crocker can have Vortigern. And I think that's going to make everyone happy. Uh, Sunny also found a, a Greek mythology planet, Odyssey, here. Uh, starting to send people up through these asteroids to kind of explore over here. His other scout ship, that was down here, he's also got a scout up here, uh, found some minerals, which is too bad because he... He was thinking ahead and sent his miner up towards this area because he thought more likely to find minerals here, but there's minerals down there. So I don't know if he'll reverse course or just wait and produce another miner to send down there. That's going to do it for the, the round of turns. I don't know if it's called a round or what because these are turns. I think these should be called rounds and a turn should be where you do all the things. Um, you do three rounds but I guess we'll call it a round of three turns. Uh, we haven't done the economic yet, but I'll do that a little bit later. I've got to, I've got to be done filming for a moment. Um, what happened? Well, started colonizing a couple colonies here, which is nice for Betty Crocker and Junior. Sonny did not get to do that, but he did discover two more colonies that are fairly close to Altair, which is his home world, 
and kind of funnel funneling up. Everyone discovered a nebula, I think. Yeah, everyone got their nebula, which is great. They're kind of like asteroids. Um, they have a different effect on combat, but otherwise they're pretty much like asteroids. Oh, and you can terraform them in order to get minerals from them if you have t terraform technology too. So it's possible someone might do that. Alrighty, we've done another round of turns and it's been a lot of exploration. People are starting to get close. The empires are starting to get close to each other. So if we look here, um, Sonny's pushed way out to this nebula here, which is very close to Junior's forces. And then if we look over here as well, he's getting kind of close to Betty Crocker. Betty Crocker and Junior are still a little bit further away, so it seems like Sonny's kind of the the point here right now. Um, lots more planets have been discovered, lots of minerals, nothing else though. Um, it's all been planets and minerals all the way around and people are just kind of building themselves up. Um, we did some research. The only thing that got fully researched in between was ship size went up for Betty Crocker. Um, Sonny and Junior both made some progress towards their goals if you're interested. Um, Junior's looking into terraforming and, um, or no, sorry, Sonny's looking into terraforming and Junior is looking into ship size as well, but he didn't put as much into it. So that's where things are going. We're going to be going into another economic phase sequence. We just finished the first turn, Sonny's turn, of the third round of play, and a couple interesting things happened. One, Sonny decided to start pulling back from this frontier here. He was pretty far afield. Um, he sees that Junior's kind of got uh, some buildup here and the kind of sweet areas that Sonny was maybe going to be exploring. Junior would be able to get there first probably and bring things back. Um, you know, he, he only had that lone scout out there. So he decided to move back. Uh, he has a couple nebulas between him and Junior now if he moves back, which is gonna would slow Junior's movement if he wanted to, to go in. So instead he's gonna focus on going this way, um, towards the center of the board, which I don't know if that's better, but at least it's, it's gonna be kind of closer to what he has here. Um, the other interesting thing that happened was he survived a black hole. And I decided, this is a house rule, that you could use if you want. If you survive a black hole, I think you should get experience for that. In the, if you're only familiar with the base game and the expansion game, your your units can become more and more experienced and better at things. So I gave him a, them a 50, 50 chance to learn from their mistake and they succeeded. So they are now a skilled scout. Scout three, that's the, the best that Sonny has to offer. So I've been doing this video um, you're going to watch this all in one piece, but I've been doing it pretty piecemeal, a little bit here and there. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot of time spent during the economic phases, but uh, we've gone through three rounds of turns, that finished with the economic phase. I think this is a good place to stop. I'm sure it's probably long enough right now, um, maybe too long, but we'll see. Uh, so let's just take a look at how things are looking before we end off on this episode of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. So Sunny. He's kind of bunched together here. He's got a lot of colonies going though, and he's he probably has the strongest um, uh, economic engine to start with. Um, though I haven't really. If we look at we can look at what they gained between turns, and Sunny gained the most, but I guess he did get a, a hefty mineral. So, but still, I think he's pulling in more. He's colonized well. He's kind of keeping close together. The other two, they're spread out a lot more. Um, Betty Crocker is coming this way, really close to Sunny here. There could be combat next turn, possibly. There's just this one dead system here. Um, well, not dead, but unexplored system here that is kind of keeping them apart. Um, and we can look at what this is. It's a scout. So it could scout there, and this is probably also a scout. Yep, it is. But Sunny's trying to keep, keep his distance, trying to keep walled off. Um, we see here Betty Crocker sending his frontier fleet, which consists of two ships, two ship groups. We know that they each contain just one ship, but the other people don't know that. So there's that. So he's going to be kind of threatening here. And there's a nice little planet cluster here 
of Sonny's. So if he can get that, that would be pretty good. Sonny doesn't have it particularly well defended. Uh, you see here the space wreck has showed up. Um, Sonny has a miner here. If that miner can get the space wreck back to a colony, he's getting, going to get a technology boost, I believe. And then if we look towards this part of the map, where uh, Betty Crocker's nearing uh, Junior, I want to say the north, but I, I don't think it's the north because these are just, this is all space, right? Um, there's still a good buffer zone. Um, Junior, however, has definitely spread the most thin, so he doesn't have this very well defended. So Betty Crocker could conceivably try to push forward and get there, but I don't think anyone feels like they're their attack fleets are very strong right now. As we said before, Junior's very spread out, kind of rangy. If he can make this work, um, he could he could do pretty well. The problem is, is he, he doesn't have a lot of uh, planets revealed. So we have a new one here. He doesn't. He's not able to terraform. He's the only person who's not able to. So he can't do anything with that. But if he can get terraforming going, he can have a nice little cluster there. Uh, he's going to move some, an MS pipeline over, and that gives him some more economic. Uh, potential as well as allows his ships to move faster if they're if they remain on the pipeline so and he's got a lot of p potential areas for exploration so there's a nice little colored zone here he can go to um, but we'll see let's take a look at uh, how how people's Technology research has been going. This is uh, Junior's right here. Junior's got ship size attack. Ship size lets you build different types of ships. So the more more that goes up, the more uh, unit types you have available to you. These are kind of more specialized things. And then he also got military academies. Um, and I think everyone's tried to get military academies, but only Junior and Sonny? Nope. Ju Junior's the only one who's been successful. The others have just gotten bad roles on that. Um, Sonny economically is doing well, but technology-wise, he's not doing well. He's just got terraforming going, um, has put some into ship size and military academies, and then Betty Crocker's probably doing the best in terms of technology. He's got ship size to level three, so he was able to make a cruiser here. I think that's what that is, a cruiser. And... He also has the terraforming, and he's close to getting tactics. So it might behoove him to start attacking, which seems like what you should do if you're insect people, because you can build ships faster because you are not as limited by your um, shipyards, because your ships are smaller. So you can build more of them with, with uh, fewer shipyards. Let's see what happens next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I've really been enjoying this game, it's been a lot of fun. And that's all I have to say right now.